Hey everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Cunning Beauty. I am Delisa here with another video for you today. So this video is a little different than a lot of my other YouTube videos or Instagram videos that you've seen. Um, of course, I always talk about beauty, hair, um, but I do like to talk about overall lifestyle. So this fits more in like the lifestyle category. But I wanted to talk to you today about my struggle and battle with uterine fibroids. The reason why I'm doing this video is because I know there are a lot of women out there who are struggling with uterine fibroids, uh, honestly, whether they know it or not. Um, I didn't even know I was struggling with uterine fibroids until I ended up in the hospital and I'll talk about that a little more. I just kind of want to talk about what uterine fibroids are, um, what are some of the signs and symptoms for you to know if you are suffering from uterine fibroids, and then um, I'll basically just talk about my personal experience with it. Um, which was really kind of life-threatening. Uh, so I definitely just kind of want to talk about that um, in case there is anyone out there struggling with it to know that you are not the only one out there um, and how you can get help. Before I go any further, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. I want to thank you all for your support so far on this YouTube journey. Um, but if you are not subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit the bell for notifications for all of my future videos. Now, before I start this video, I just want to say I am not a doctor. I am not a medical professional. I am just talking about my personal experience of what I went through with uterine fibroids and what I learned in the process from the doctors that helped me along the way. This is just my personal experience. Don't take this to anyone and say, hey, this is, you're diagnosed with this. Like I'm not diagnosing anyone. I'm just letting you know what my symptoms and what my experience was. So first let's talk about what uterine fibroids are. So a, basically a uterine fibroid is like a mass tumor that grows on the wall of your uterus uh, and they can be just as small as a centimeter or I've heard as many women sometimes they're the size of a football. God bless anyone who has experienced that. I actually think I know someone who has experienced one that big and um, she's an amazing woman. They're typically um, benign and they're typically not cancerous or anything like that. There's just these masses that just tend to grow on your uterus. The size of my uterine fibroid was the size of a golf ball. When you think about how big a golf ball is, that's a pretty big mass to be sitting on your uterus. So before I go any further, I do wanna just say that some of the language I'll be using is a little bit uncomfortable, uh, especially since we're just dealing with womanly issues. So um, we talk about blood and things like that. So if things like that make you feel uncomfortable, no harm done. If this this may just not be the video for you, or if you're a guy watching this, this may make you feel a little uncomfortable, but, this happens to a lot of women. So even if you are a guy, I would continue to maybe keep watching because you never know if you're dating someone or your wife or someone like that may be struggling with this. And it'll be kind of good to know what they're going through. Some of the symptoms that you'll deal with with uterine fibroids are prolonged periods. Now a menstrual period can last an average woman anywhere from three to five days, maybe sometimes six days. Uh, with uterine fibroids, sometimes your menstrual period will be about 10, 12, 15 days. Now I know for myself, I dealt with periods that lasted about 10 to 12 days. And when it got to maybe like that third day, from the third day to the 10th or 12th day, it was a heavy flow the entire time. Like there were times where I had to wear a tampon and a pad to cover myself. As embarrassing as it is, there have been times where I was at work and I had leaked through, like literally soaked my pants. I would have to change my tampon maybe six, seven, eight times a day because I was bleeding so much. So that's one of the symptoms that you deal with with uterine fibroids, the prolonged periods, and then just the heavy bleeding. So ladies, don't think that having a period that lasts you about 10 to 12 days is normal. Um, even if you're not bleeding that heavy, I don't think your period should be that long. I would definitely maybe go get an ultrasound um, just to see and make sure everything's the way it's supposed to be. So some of the other symptoms you'll get are um, pain in your lower, lower abdomen and your lower back. Um, you'll also have pain during sex. And then also headaches and dizziness because of all of the blood that you're losing, it makes you very dizzy all the time. Where do uterine fibroids come from? No one really knows. I mean, it, for me, it was a history in my family because some of the women in my, in my family struggled with 
uterine fibroids. Actually, my mother struggled with uterine fibroids when she was about maybe 35, 36, 37, and she actually had to have a hysterectomy because of it. So for me personally, um, my uterine fibroids more than likely came from the history that I have in my family. My mother directly actually suffered from uterine fibroids when she was about 35, 36, 37. Uh, she, actually asked, she actually had to have a hysterectomy uh, to stop the suffering of uterine fibroids. I mean, luckily she had already had a kid, she had me, and she didn't plan on having any more children, uh, so she made the decision to remove her uterus and to have a hysterectomy so that she just wouldn't have to suffer with any of the symptoms or the pain or anything like that anymore. So the reason why I got uterine fibroids is more than likely because of the history of my family, specifically my mother, who is direct line from me, the next closest to me. So that's where my uterine fibroids came from. So the one scary thing about uterine fibroids is that most of the time you don't even know you're suffering from it uh, until it's too late. So I started feeling symptoms in 2013, um, probably in about May or June is when at least I noticed that I was having very long periods that were lasting 10, 12 days and the bleeding was very heavy. Um, I wasn't able to stay outside very long in the sun. And of course I live in Florida where in June and July, it's very hot outside. I remember I took a trip to New York and it was 2013 and it was probably the hottest heat wave that they've ever had. And I went there with a lot of my girlfriends and I was suffering. Like we would be walking to the subway and I would be so out of breath and it was hot and I was dizzy and it was just not a good experience for me um, while I was in New York. I had a lot of fun, I, I pushed through it because I'm a G, but I mean, I was literally dying the entire time, like literally dying and I didn't even know it. Know it. So luckily my friends were there to kind of support me and you know give me a hug and things like that. So I appreciate that, but um, being in the heat and walking for long periods of time was definitely a struggle for me. I would say it wasn't until August is probably when I really started to feel that I just wasn't breathing correctly. I remember living on the second floor of my apartment building and I would walk out, go into work, close my door, and I would walk down one flight of stairs to my car and I would have to stop and literally catch my breath because I could not breathe. So I think that's when I started to notice that something wasn't right. And shame on me, I did not go to the doctor right away. I thought it was just, maybe I just wasn't feeling well that day or you know, you just never think that something's really wrong until it's really wrong. So um, it got to the point where I was even so pale, like people would notice how pale I was and how, you know, even while I was at work, I would walk from one part of the office to the other part of the office and I would literally be out of breath. Like I thought I was going to pass out. So fast forward to September, maybe about three weeks later, is when it was actually my coworkers and my boss that was like, Delisa, you do not look well. You are whiter than me, because my boss was white, and she was like, you look just as white as me right now, you need to go to the doctor. I ended up calling a friend of mine who came to work, she was very nice, came to work and took me to the emergency room. I went to Celebration Hospital. Um, at the time, it was called uh, Celebration Hospital. It was a part of Florida Hospital out in Celebration, Florida that was near my job. So on my way to the doctor, of course, I'm calling my mother, like scared to death saying, mom, I'm going to the emergency room. Like, I don't know what's wrong with me. And she's like, well, when you go into the emergency room, make sure you tell them that you can't breathe. And not that I was lying, I literally cannot breathe. But you know, if you go into the emergency room and you tell them that you're having like breathing problems or heart problems, they usually take you right away, um, which was what was really happening to me. I could not breathe. So I told them that. Um, they started doing tests on me right away, blood pressure, blood work. I remember having like maybe two doctors and like two nurses around me because they could not figure out what was going on. So, so after the blood work, I found out that my hemoglobin 
was a 3.6. Now let's talk about hemoglobin for a minute. So hemoglobin is an iron protein in your blood that um, transfers oxygen to the other parts of your body. So it, take, it transfers oxygen to different tissues, your heart, your lungs, um, basically all of the functions in your body that need oxygen, your hemoglobin and your blood helps with that. So when they told me that my hemoglobin was a 3.6, I'm like, okay, I'm, is that bad? Like, I don't understand. Um, and the, I, I will never forget for the rest of my life, the doctor told me, you are a walking dead person. I've never seen anyone physically walk into a hospital that has a 3.6 hemoglobin. Like, I don't even know how you got here alive. So to put that in perspective for you, the average hemoglobin for an average woman of my age, at, even at the time, is between a 12 and a 15. Did you hear me? Between 12 and 15. My hemoglobin was a 3.6. So that basically meant that I had no blood pumping where I needed it or no iron in my blood pumping where I needed it at all. It wasn't pumping to my heart, it wasn't pumping to my lungs. So this is why I was feeling the way that I did because I basically had no blood. So then the next question is, well, why doesn't she have any blood? Like, why is her hemoglobin so low? I did explain to them the symptoms that I was having. I was um, having periods of 10, 12 days at a time, heavy bleeding, um, you know, feeling dizzy, headaches, things like that. So immediately they called in a special, a special, a gynecologist. He was a specialist. Um, he only dealt with specific cases, um, including uterine fibroids. Dr. Kim, nicest guy ever. Um, and I remember him coming in and saying that they were going to do an ultrasound. So they did an ultrasound. They did a vaginal ultra ultrasound, which basically means instead of them rolling, um, doing the sonogram on top of your stomach like they would if you're pregnant, they literally insert it through your vagina and they take the ultrasound that way. And that's how they found the fibroid. They actually found a couple of fibroids, um, but the biggest one that they found was the size of a golf ball, like I mentioned before. Um, basically their point of action first was a blood transfusion. So I got about five pints of blood with my blood transfusion. Um, that was the first thing that they did. So. Whenever you get a blood transfusion, you automatically go in ICU. So they put me in ICU for two days and I was there just getting the blood that I needed. They were still pulling blood and doing blood work so that they can check on my hemoglobin to make sure it was getting back to where it needed to be. But that's uh, that was the first uh, process that they did. So the second thing they needed to do was figure out how they could ease the symptoms or cure me from these uterine fibroids that were causing me to lose so much blood during my periods. At the time, I was 27 years old. And although anyone who knows me knows I'm not big on having children at all, um, I didn't want to do a hysterectomy just in case I changed my mind. At the time I was 27, I was single. What if I meet the man of my dreams and get married and I want to have kids? So I didn't want to do the hysterectomy, which luckily wasn't my only option considering um, how big the fibroid was. The second option and the option that I actually went with was a myomectomy. So a myomectomy is a surgery that is done to remove uterine fibroids or any type of mass on your uterus. Um, so luckily I was able to do a surgery that was non-invasive. I did a hysteroscopy and what that is, is a hysteroscopy is like a little tube that has a light on it um, and they can insert it through your vagina. So you're, they're not cutting you, but they're inserting it through your vagina and they can look in your uterus with this little tube. Um, it even has a little camera on it so the doctor can see exactly what's going on and where the uterine fibroid is. Then they also insert a laser. And what the laser does is it literally kind of gently lasers off the mass, the uterine fibroid off of your uterus. Um, so that's what we did. So the first surgery I did while I was still in ICU, this is probably the third day I was in the hospital now, maybe second or third day I was in ICU. 
and we scheduled the hysteroscopy. So um, I think that was the first time I ever had like a major surgery, even though they weren't cutting me, it was um, very major surgery. They had to put me under um, and that was my first time, I think ever being put to sleep in the hospital for a surgery. So it was really scary, but it needed to be done. The wonderful Dr. Kim did a hysteroscopy. So I was told the surgery lasted about two to three hours. I was in surgery for two to three hours and they didn't wanna leave me under too much longer, so they stopped at three hours and they weren't even able to get the whole thing, like that's how big it was. Um, they weren't even able to get the whole fibroid in one surgery, so they took me out of surgery, put me back in ICU. Now, side note, my whole life, I had never been allergic to anything, not that I'm aware of. When I was in the hospital, once they took me out of surgery for my hysteroscopy, to help with the pain, they gave me Dilaudid. I don't know if you've ever heard of Dilaudid, but it's a painkiller or pain medicine that they put in an IV that they give you um, to help with the pain after surgery. Then I found out I was allergic to Dilaudid when it was too late. So if you've ever taken a pre-workout and how it makes you all tingly and almost a little itchy, imagine that times a thousand. So that's how Dilaudid it made me feel. I didn't even, I don't even think I actually got rashes. It was just the sensation and the feeling of the tingling in my body like was on 10. Like I was moaning, I was crying, I couldn't stop moving. And my mom was like, oh my God, like what is going on? I was like, I don't know. Like I feel like I'm itching. I can't stop moving, blah, blah, blah. And it was just, it was such a terrible feeling. Um, but then the doctor was like, I think she's allergic to Dilaudid. So we're gonna take her off Dilaudid. Um, and they gave me another pain medicine. I'm not even sure which one it was, but it helped and I stopped the itching sensation and we were good. But then I found out anytime I go to the doctor and they ask me, do I have allergies? I always put Dilaudid because I never want to have that feeling again. But anyway, so they didn't get the whole fibroid in the first surgery. So we had to schedule a second surgery with Dr. Kim. And again, it's, it's non-invasive. So it was an outpatient surgery that I did. My mom, my mother, my wonderful mother came down and uh, came with me to the hospital to do the outpatient surgery. Um, and it only lasted an hour or two and they were able to get the rest of the fibro. After the first surgery, I was out of work for about two weeks, almost two weeks. I think it was maybe about 12 days. Um, just because I had um, to recover from the blood transfusions and recover from the myomectomy. So I was out of work for about 12 days. After the second surgery, I think I was only out of work for maybe about five days. Um, that was the recovery time for the myomectomy, which wasn't as bad as the first time. Um, but luckily they were able to get the uterine fibroids. I loved my doctor, Dr. Ken, so much that I actually started going I actually made him my just normal gynecologist that I was going to for even a few years after that. He's not there anymore and it's very upsetting, but he was my favorite doctor ever. Um, but the conversation that we had to have after the surgeries is, okay, how do we make sure that these fibroids don't come back and I have to do this process on all over again because God forbid I have to do this all over again. So at the time, I was not on birth control. I hadn't been on birth control for maybe about seven years. Um, so he suggested that I get on birth control and I can get, you know, like the low, like the, the birth control I'm on now is low, low estrogen. So it's like a very low dose birth control. But what he suggested is that I don't get a period. And the way to do that, if you're just on the regular pill, is that you don't stop taking your birth control after your pills your pills are done. So once you, if your pills are blue, like the package that I have is blue, once you take all of those pills, you start a new pack. Um, and that way you just keep taking them, you don't take a break, you don't get a period. So that way you're not losing any blood or you losing as much blood as you normally would. And I asked him because a normal person hearing this, they're like, that can't be safe for you to not get a period and to keep just taking your birth control. Um, but my doctor said it's totally safe, especially if you're not wanting to have kids, it is totally safe to do that. There's really no reason for a woman to have a period unless they wanna get pregnant and ovulate and things like that. So he recommended that I just continue to take my birth control so I don't have a period. Um, I have not had a real period in probably about four years now. Um, 
which I have no complaints. Um, I recommend it for anyone who is not looking to have a child anytime soon, uh, but that's just me. But it has worked. I mean, since I have been taking the birth control straight through, my hemoglobin has been Hi, now I'm still slightly anemic. My hemoglobin stays usually between like an a 10 and an 11. Uh, like I said, the average is between 12 and 15. So uh, my hemoglobin is still just low because just, just because I have like low iron uh, and I'm just anemic, but I'm not as severely anemic as I was when I had the uterine fibroids. So basically what I do now to check for uterine fibroids, I typically go get an ultrasound once a year for them to check um, if there are any other masses on my uterus. And the reason why we do that is because when I found out I had the uterine fibroids, we don't know if that, we don't know if it grew that way within a week or if it grew that way 10 years and then it just got big and then I couldn't take it anymore or if it was a month, like we don't know how long it took for the fibroid to grow. So they recommend that I get an ultrasound every year to check the size of any uterus that I have. So I've been going every year. I do have like a small mass in my uterus, but they literally said it's it's only about an inch right now. And because I'm not getting periods, I shouldn't be getting any symptoms from it. So basically now I am totally okay. I'm totally fine. So that's really it. I know this video was very different. I hope it was helpful for anyone who is who thinks they're struggling with uterine fibroids or they know they're struggling with uterine fibroids and they don't know what to do, my recommendation is go to the doctor as soon as you start having symptoms because you do not want to end up like I did where you're like literally on your deathbed. So definitely go to the doctor, get checked up. If you have any questions about my experience, feel free to ask me, drop them in the comments below and I'm happy to answer them as truthful as I can and help the next person or the next woman who is struggling with this. So if this was a helpful video, make sure you give me a thumbs up or if you just like this video or like this type of content, let me know um, so that I can continue to share these experiences that I've had in my lifetime if it can indeed help the next person. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.